Hi there! This is Fempsychon's 14th vlog. Lately I've been talking about fertility preservation and the effect of cancer treatments on female fertility. Today's video will be on the different measurements of fertility and the rates at which cancer survivors ovarian reserve change compared to that of late reproductive age women. This paper was recently published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. Differential rates of change in measures of ovarian reserve in young cancer survivors across the reproductive lifespan. The first author is Catherine Cameron and the senior author is Clarissa Gracia, both from UPenn. This study tries to answer, is there a difference in fertility between women who have survived cancer and late reproductive age women? I know it sounds a little presumptive to ask this question, however, cancer therapy has greatly improved within the last decade. And so patients are able to look beyond their cancer diagnosis and treatment and plan for their lives after cancer therapy. Future fertility and the length of the reproductive window are important concerns for many cancer survivors. However, both radiation and chemotherapy greatly diminish the amount of ovarian follicles, which are the groups of cells that releases eggs that become fertilized. So this paper wants to measure the fertility in women who have survived cancer and compare it to women of late reproductive age. The researchers hypothesize that fertility in cancer survivors may look different compared to similar aged women without cancer and that the fertility of the cancer survivors may look comparable to late reproductive age women. First, the researchers categorized their demographic data within the three groups. They looked at the levels of their hormones taken from blood samples and found that cancer survivors had lower AMH levels compared to similar aged women, but higher than late reproductive aged women. FSH levels are comparable between cancer survivors and late reproductive aged women, but more than similar aged women. Estradiol is significantly decreased in cancer survivors compared to the other two groups. LH is highest in cancer survivors than in late reproductive aged women than similar aged women. Inhibin B is greatly reduced in cancer survivors than in late reproductive aged women than similar aged women. MOV is smallest in cancer survivors than in late reproductive aged women than similar aged women. AFC in cancer survivors are between similar aged women who have the highest and late reproductive aged women who have the lowest. Researchers then took a subset of the cancer survivors who did not take additional hormones to see how their fertility is affected. Cancer survivors' AMH levels are no longer drastically decreased compared to similar aged women. For antral follicle count, researchers determined that there was no difference between cancer survivors and similar aged women. Finally, the researchers further divide the cancer survivor group into how much cancer toxicity they were exposed to. They found a trend. As cancer treatment becomes more intense, AMH levels drop. Similarly, as cancer treatment becomes more intense, AFC slightly decreases. So what does this all mean? This study demonstrates that both anti-malarian hormone and antral follicle count decline with age after the mid-reproductive age peak found in all three groups. Strengths of this study include the length of follow-up with their patients and the comprehensive list of hormone measures analyzed. There are caveats and factors to keep in mind. First, they did not compare the effect of specific chemotherapies on ovarian reserve. Next, overall length of follow-up time is relatively short when making conclusions about the reproductive lifespan. And lastly, should hormone levels and menstrual function be used to predict spontaneous pregnancy rates in cancer survivors? What other options are there to determine fertility in cancer survivors? Overall, this study compares the rate of change of hormones between cancer survivors with similar aged women and late reproductive aged women. Thank you for reading, listening, and watching my assessment on this paper on fertility. Keep informed, stay interested, and keep doing great women's health research. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in this content, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can also check out my website, fempsychom.com, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at fempsychom. Bye!